come to me, but I can go to her. So I went along. Everybody knows that um, Margaret, Mar my ex, Margaret, my, my beautiful wee ex, she and I, um, we, we spent 25 years together. Um, and I loved her with all my heart, still do. And uh, like Margo was, um, Margo was the same age as me, you know. Um, and I, I loved being with her, and you know she loved being with me. And we went on holidays. I think we were in Florida, Florida about thirteen times, and um, and and everything. But the, at the end of uh, at the end of our relationship, whenever things um, fell apart, my fault. Um, then some intimidating things happened, you know. Um, I would wake up in the middle of the night and smell burning and look out and there was like a, uh, <laughs> a burning mattress, you know, against my front door. <laughs> um, I'm laughing, but it's, uh, it's not funny. Uh, my car was broken into, you know, but the, the thing is that there, that there were local people that knew me who were involved. In the uh, in the intimidation, and they thought that because you know I had left, you know, or no, not that I left it, because me and Margaret had split up, that uh, that they were on her side and they were against me, and it got this stage where things were being mixed and mixed and mixed in rumors and mayhem and all sorts of things, to the extent that. Uh, even people that I thought were really close to me um, were secretly being sort of um, recruited into the, you know, the Auntie John brigade. Um, so I got rats put through my letterbox. I've had my car broken into. Um, I had, uh, I mean, like you, you, you name it, anything that could be done. The thing about it is too, is that um, a guy that I was really close to and a, a musician friend of mine who I had played along with um, actually rang me one morning, quarter past nine or whatever, and said, um, I've just drove past your car and um, it looks as if one of the doors is open, you know? Uh, and then I, I ran down, my car door was open and stupidly I had left my speakers and even the takings from the night before, like 150 quid in the glove compartment, and I'd, I'd left them, left it in the car to go up and uh, and have a drink whenever I came back. Then you know fr from the gig the night before. Um, so everything was gone, and I had no uh, no ability to do my gig that day. Then the Monday Club over in the Alpha Club, the East Way over in Rathcoole. But then I got to thinking and going, hold on a wee second. Why did he ring me if he drove past and so why why not just stop the car, run up and look in? Because maybe it was happening at the time, you know, knock the door and say, John, you know But a phone call, you know, to, to say, um, your car count, you know, and that that put it into my head, you know, what the hell? You know, why would somebody do that? Um you know, see it, go home, and then ring you. <laughs> so, uh, so that started to put a bit of suspicion into my head. But anyway, one of the things that um, that you know about this forgive and forget, I'll, I'll, and I will never forgive um, these people for this. But uh, I was supposed to be doing a gig in the cozy. Hadn't done it for a long time. Hadn't played in the venue for a long time because the guy who had, you know, told me that my car was broken into, had um, had he he and I were working together at one stage, and then he convinced the bar to allow us to do a a, a New Year's Eve party somewhere. Um, but the bar had booked us for for the for New Year's Eve in the cozy. But he said that. We were going to do it, and it was my fault. I, and I wanted to do the. I, I had been playing in the cozy every two weeks, like for ten years up to that point. I loved the place, um, so there's no way that I would turn around and say, you know, let's play somewhere else. You know, it was like a kind of a tradition. But he blamed me anyway. The bar believed him, 
um, because he was in it more often because I couldn't go into the bar then because I'd split up with Margaret. Uh, and then after a couple of months, uh, Big Junior, um, he saw us and sent me a text, can you play on Saturday? And I said, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I think I can, no, no problem. And B Big Junior says, right, I'll put a wee poster up. So two days after the poster went up to say that I was playing in the bar in the cosy, I got a text message on my rather ancient, <laughs> you know, Nokia, whatever flip up thing and it uh, it said that if you come if, if you step over the door of the cozy you're going to be kneecapped um the cozy team sort of thing and and so it was something that was sent to me to make me obviously feel intimidated so so that i wouldn't go you know uh, and do the gig and uh, so i i contacted um Junior, the, the the bar manager, and said to him, uh, Junior, what's going on here? Because, you know, I know that these people aren't probably associated with you. It's probably something more to do with my breakup and my marriage and stuff. But um, I got this text, you know, and apparently if I go to the cozy on Saturday, I'm going to be, I'm going to be kneecapped, you know. And he went, leave it with me. Um, and then he, he he rang me up and he said, come to the bar now. And it was like a Tuesday before the Saturday. I went to the bar um, and he said, I've, you know, everything's okay. There's no way. He says, in fact, the worst thing that you can do is to not play here on Saturday. And I went, <laughs> I'm going to stand here and sing on Saturday all night thinking that at some stage I'm going to be dragged away by you know, some guys in boom boom uh, right round by the entry. Um, and he went, it's not going to happen. Believe me, it's not going to happen. So I had it and still have a dear friend in the, in the cozy who I have known from day one. And uh, Big T will know who he is. Um, and he said, give me your phone. This was on the day that I was over talking to Junior. And um, I sent, I gave him my, my, my phone and he went, I recognize that number um, and I said whose is it he says I can't tell you I mean, this was the this is the thing you know that really 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 annoys me he says I can't tell you and I, I understood that he says but I know for a fact that two days ago he was texting somebody saying that well that's that sort of like you know he'll not be uh, back in the bar again and the guy beside him was your guitarist who you had been playing with. The guy who had said that you were to blame for the, you know. And I'm going, so he was sitting beside, you know, this guy. He said, yeah, he more or less instigated the thing. And I'm not going to tell you who was on the other side because I'm not going to burst any bubbles. But he wasn't on his own. But at the same time, you know, Haters gonna hate, and that's why um, you know I, I said about the Fanjo thing earlier on because he said to me um, in a message a while back, he says, uh, you know, haters gonna hate, uh, no matter what you do, you know, if someone get has it in for you, you're done, you know, as far as the, you know, the abuse is concerned.